And we're live. Welcome to the Hawaii Volcano Squad Lock and Load uh, Monday chat. Um, and uh, hope everybody got to see my latest video, my IFAC uh, individual first aid kit that I posted today. And I don't know, um, it probably still needs some medical shears, but other than that, I think it's you know enough to get me from the, if there's any, if I'm ever at the range and there's some injury get to the hospital without, you know, or if somebody else has an accident, I can get them, stop the bleeding, you know. Uh, I have a medical bag, which has all kinds of cool stuff in it, you know, and, uh, but this is like something you could just strap to your belt, you know, or any piece of molly gear, and um, so check it out. If I, I have quick clot in my medical bag, but, you know, um, uh, you know, it's more, obviously my medical bag is going to be more complete, you know, because uh, it's like a lot bigger. <laughs> anyway, so Squib has a few things to say. If anybody wants to join, you know, give us a shout out and I'll try and get you a link. Um, we're broadcasting on gun channels from the pineapple, gunchannels.com, which is free to join. It's like a lot of Second Amendment people. Also, we're going to talk about, we've got that, uh, the, the uh, I think, one of the representatives in Congress, uh, I forget whether it's the House of Representatives or the Senate, but the, they introduced that uh, uh, Hearing Protection Act, you know, to make uh, suppressors, suppressors legal in America. I live in a state where the state actually bans them. And I attended, uh, when I went to the hunting class to get my, that I had to, to get my state hunting license in Hawaii, you know, there, the, the, one of the uh, instructors at the hunting class was a former, uh, the police, uh, you know, uh, marksmanship uh, trainer for all the police. And he was deaf. He had to read lips. Because why? Because they didn't let him use hair, any suppressors, you know? I mean, and so naturally over time, I mean, he literally has to read your lips. And, and because, they, you know, whole suppressors have been illegal, you know? So... Hearing is a precious thing, you know. I mean, uh, you can go deaf by listening to like rap music too loud. Those those bass freak drum frequencies will make you, you know. Or if you just bang your head next to you know like a stack of Marshalls for too long, you know. Uh, either way, you know you can lose your hearing. You know, I think uh, the engineer for the Beatles uh, lost his hearing eventually over time, and he, he had to quit engineering. Um, my as a former audio engineer, I should remember his name, but it's been so long. <laughs> what was the name of the audio engineer for the Beatles that made him, made all their hit songs so good? Squib, you take over. I've been hanging out by the pool. They had free beer at the pool today. So uh, Squib is now in charge. <laughs> what did you think of my IFAC kit? You were, you were in the Marines, so I guess you had your own in the Marines, right? Uh, you know, I don't remember that being in my 782 gear, but we always had a Navy corpsman, uh, nearby. We had, uh, two corpsmen and a flight surgeon attached to our squadron. So, uh, the, the Navy, the Navy docs were really good. I mean, uh, they'd get in there and they'd do everything any Marine would do. And, uh, I got a lot of respect for those guys. And uh, I remember I broke my nose in France, and uh, Doc came running out with a pack that was a lot bigger than my Alice pack, and it was all full of goodies, and they were able to get me patched up to get me down to the uh, French Army Hospital. We were on a French Army base. But, uh, yeah, I, I didn't actually carry a first aid kit on me any time. Um, it was afterward... Uh, I mean, in I Afghanistan, bought my own cartridge belt and web gear and all that other stuff that I bought. One of those uh, first aid kits, the, the small plastic box one. Yeah, you know, people are, you know, from what I've heard, you know, from the news and all and all the channels that, that you know, people who get injured or, you know, suffer, you know, gunshot wounds or IED attacks, they, they're surviving now because of the good medical, you know, first aid and, and the, you know, uh, the, the, the medical teams that rush out, you know, 
uh, to save people's lives, you know, but so there's a lot more people that come back, you know, and they, if maybe they have to have something amputated or something, but they're, they're still alive. And so that was, you know, that particular kit is, you know, to get you, you know, to stop the bleeding and get to the hospital alive, you know, because oh. obviously the, an emergency room will be equipped to deal with, you know, what, you know, any problem. And those guys save lives in emergency rooms. That's what they do for a living. You know, they save people's lives. So if you can get, you know, uh, you know, uh, whoever got hurt to an Since ER. I was in, they've, they've improved the technology. Yeah, a lot. You know, I, I've seen it like, you know, on, uh, they have those, Medical, the, the guys that are at the base yeah. or the medical teams, the and they just active duty. They've they've done a lot with the bandages. Well, yeah, I've, uh, yeah. That's why I put those those Israeli bandages make great, um, you know, tourniquets if you know if you need a tourniquet to stop bleeding, you know. And uh, obviously, you know, you don't want to have somebody die because they bleed out, you know. So definitely don't give them aspirin if they're bleeding out. You know, aspirin is for strictly for. I mean, you can get suffer a serious injury and have a heart attack and need aspirin, but if they're bleeding out, uh, aspirin basically stops platelets from sticking together, and which is important if you have somebody has a heart attack, but it's bad if you're if they're they have a bleeding problem and you need to, you know, uh, stop them from bleeding out. They'll bleed out faster if they have aspirin. So, um, but uh, anyway, I'm not a doctor. I just. Uh, I learned everything I learned about uh, medicine the hard way, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, oh, you got some lag, Squib? Okay, I think we just yeah. Had... I think uh, you're you're here. You know, it's probably because you're just so far away. That's why. Hawaii. Well, I mean, the internet is worldwide. I don't know, man. I think we got Edge. Who just joined us? The world famous Edge. Um, I don't like to have labels, but sure, why not? <laughs> I haven't seen Finn on your chat for a while. I was wondering if he would like my. Uh, I was wondering what his opinion of my iFat kit was, but. Um, well, hopefully no. he'll check out. Uh, he's uh, he's been really busy with his uh, at a uh, adventure. He's he's taken on uh, with uh, the Masons. I'm really occupied in his free time. Oh well, I mean, I thought it was just the his company, his his job with five eleven. He's a and right now, On top of that, he's a shot show. Well, yeah, I really like today's uh, daily gun show on gun channels. But somebody was like, I think it was Hosh Nazi versus uh, had a little test uh, knife attack, with, except it was with a, a sharpie. You know, I didn't. I didn't like him seeing abusing an elderly man. <laughs> and honestly, to, I wish yeah. I was there. I, 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 you know, with my practice the karambit, I, I would have taken them all on. Uh, you know, it would have been a challenge. But uh, oh, Bob was on his way to get some milk and eggs and a case of beer. And, you know, the guy had to, like, the thug had to attack him. <laughs> yeah, I was. I I started this chat late today because there was like free beer at the condominium pool. So. You know, I'm like a couple six packs down the road. Since your last chat was about beer, you know, I was, I had one, I had like two glasses of Heineken and a bunch of uh, uh, IPA uh, castaway um, Kona Brew Company, Kona, Kona Brewing Company beer. So, uh, I can dig it. And those, and there was pretty girls at the pool too. So, you know, all the I things, mean, is, I, the is things I do for, is free beer normal in Hawaii? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know, but it is now. I, I demand free beer from now on. <laughs> oh, it's in my life. I was when thinking I if those girls by the pool were actually old enough and I didn't need their parents' permission, I could I could make a really successful YouTube video like demonstrating like my siege uh lantern you know that it floats in the water and stuff but um because there was a couple of blondes doing races in the pool but their parents weren't around so i was just sitting poolside drinking beer while somebody else ran the races and i had nothing to do with it i was just drinking beer so anyway uh so i so finn has been busy uh he's a shot show 
he's got they've got a booth there for brass top brass tactical top brass holter yeah and tactical uh, they're they're doing their thing over there so he left yesterday and um i saw his post on facebook so he's pretty psyched about going and yeah i would be too i have plans next year hopefully i'll get my shit together me and, too uh, i'd like to go there and 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 let you know i i did challenge g webs to like you know a, a long time ago when he was doing when i was in california but he skipped he skipped out on on a uh like a blue, you know, practice gun versus uh, practice karambit speed test to see who would win. But I think he knew he would have lost. So, I mean, and, and I was going to say, if he could, if, if an old guy with a, with a practice karambit can, who just had bypass surgery could beat him, then, you know, he needs to think his, he needs to reassess the threats of, of edge weapons. But, um, well, the only way I'm going to fight somebody in life is just my last resort, man. And, and like any and like all the knife things the knife fights i've seen it's that whole thing i think this one guy did a really good video it was very controversial where he was like you know this whole thing where people like underhand the knife and and, and hold it open and, and this and that and they have all these techniques i mean those are cool it's like karate if if you're gonna fight somebody's gonna honor you you know uh with a, a fair fight with a knife like you know, uh, there's no rope. such thing there's no such thing as a fair fight well, that's what I'm saying, though, is that it's kind of like, you know, like karate when you're in a tournament and you have rules and you can't do this, can't do that. So within those limited rules, then you have some kind of respect for each other. But a knife fight is usually just some guy who's pissed at you is going to come at you and he's going to try to stab you as many times as he can at chess and, or, or slash you. And therefore, you know, it's there's not there's not much technique to it. There is if you know how to defend against it. But, you know, it, it does. You know, require a bit of knowledge. There's a few links in my channels for some, you know, good guys who know how to do that. Maul five six five is an incredible martial artist. Uh, Maul Marnie from Bruni, he's a Silat uh, uh, martial artist who travels around the world and treat, teaches like police forces and military units. Uh, by the way, I don't know if anybody saw um, Commander Zero. Uh, his latest video, uh, and but he had some great videos training um, the uh, uh, the the South African uh, Park Rangers. Uh, he had like three or four videos training the the Park Rangers how to defend against poachers, you know. And they're like basically they guard the rhinoceroses who, who get their horns poached because um you know because of that whole fallacy that you know people think that somewhere in in Asia, they think that, you know, that's like an aphrodisiac and not a rhinoceros for it. It's just calcium. I mean, you know, I there's... Hear I hear tiger penis is good for the wing. <laughs> don't, don't... Uh, well, you know, you could hear anything on the internet, but, you know... Uh, no, it's a golden child. I saw that movie. Oh, well, basically, killing rhinoceros is, is, is this very stupid thing to do, and they're, they're endangered species. And, and so these park ranchers... Commander Zero was basically teaching them how to, uh, you know, uh, fight, respond as a unit, and you know, just you know, it was a great, some great videos, uh, and it's he's doing God's work showing those guys how to fight because they have to fight, you know, you know, organizations of criminal poachers from China, you know, and that are well armed, and basically it was just like, you know, if you know, if you move as a, as she's showing them how to move as a unit, how to get out of an ambush if they, you know, drive up onto a bunch of poachers. You know, to back off uh, and and then how to move as a unit and basically it was like if 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 the if you're whoever you're fighting sees you move like a professional military unit they will just run, you know they won't even bother fighting they'll just run, uh, and you know uh, because if they see you know like a professional military unit people moving like a professional military unit they're not going to want to fight, <laughs> you know. Was he on a pair of uh, sheetrock stilts? Because that dude's like five two. You, yeah, I know, but it was the knowledge he was training them with. It wasn't how tall he is, you know. I, you know, I mean, it, you know, it's not how tall you are or something, you know. Not what my wife said. Ah, uh, okay, IFAT kit. So you're when you were in the Marines, Squib, you didn't have your own IFAT kit. It was you were relying on uh, the other the the military for the. Medics and doctors. Hope he heard me. I know he said he had some lag. Squibs was in the Marines um, a while back. Yeah. 
And we're yeah, just that's... we're just all civilians, so I'm like used to having to rely on myself, which is why I, you know built that medical kit, you know. And well, there's, I mean, uh, it, it's I mean, like you're saying earlier, before, before I joined the chat, you know, a lot of people are surviving, um, you know, rounds, taking a round because somebody has one of these kind of kits on hand, or a. Uh, or all kinds of shit that happens at the range when you get an old pressure round and fucks up your gun, messes up your hand, maybe your eyes, your face, whatever. And uh, people are surviving that kind of stuff now. Yeah, I think, you know, the thing to do is, okay, Scoop's going to reload, relo relock and load or whatever his internet. But, um, yeah, I think the thing is you what you want to do is get yourself alive to a hospital emergency room. Because that's what they do in hospitals. They they're really they they work to save people's lives in in in, in the uh, emergency rooms. That's all they do, you know. And whether you show up there with a heart attack or a sprained ankle, but basically, you know, they're they're there just to save people's lives. So if you can get yourself stop yourself from bleeding and manage to get to a hospital still breathing and with enough blood in your system, then you've got a pretty good chance that they'll be able to save you. Uh, so. I remember watching a video ways back a couple of years ago. A guy was shooting a, a wasn't a Barrett, but it was a it was a 50 cal a bolt action rifle. It's called was it made by Vulcan Vulcan. And it's on live it's on live leak. And uh, what a Vulcan round, a Vulcan Gatling gun? No, a Vulcan um, a, a bolt action rifle. And they're oh. known for inexpensive and uh you know it's a big dude he's a, he's, he's a big boy you know he weighs quite a bit too and man he shoots the first round and the fucking bolt blows back and stabs him in the throat How? And, and he's just there on the ground rolling around man and you know everybody takes takes action and pretty sure you survived it you know but it, it gave him a good gash you know not luckily it didn't hit the jugular any main arteries but it's still you know Fucked him up good, and uh, you know again they they have uh, a lot of those ranges you go to. That's one thing I would I, would, I recommend when you go to a range. You should have your own stuff, mind you. But you know a good thing to, to see is do they have you know uh, kits you know hanging up around the the you know in the range area to treat people in case there is an accident. Yeah, stop the bleeding and get to you know emergency room as quick as possible. I mean. Uh, there's the people who can really save you, and um, so you know. I mean, they saved me once, so uh, you know. It's like if you if you want to know the safest place to be, it's probably in a good hospital's emergency room, you know. Uh, but um, so you know, but you have to get there, and if you're out, you know, somewhere where there's no medical help available, you know, you gotta you gotta know the basics of how to. You know, work a tourniquet, and um, uh, you know, it's it's you know, just get 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 your ass to the hospital as quick as possible, and uh, you know, don't be afraid. Don't don't try and tough it out. You know, if you if you want to call nine one one, if you think you might need help, call nine one one. It'll save your life. You know, um, that's what that's what they do. Uh, so, um, and. Um, Anyway, so yeah, I've, I've made those IFAC kits, and I have my medical bag. But it's all about just keeping, keeping, keeping yourself alive until you can get professional medical help. You know, so that's all my medical kits are really about. Um, you know, that and some water filtration and all. But uh, um, anyway, uh, are, so hey, there's. Are you thinking about? Uh, I don't. What, what's the? What are the? How is it in Texas with suppressors? You know, I mean, I know that they they passed the. Uh, they they introduced not passed introduced the you know hearing protection act in Congress you know uh, I, I don't know if you own any suppressors or have any friends with any but no I don't um, cause, no I, I've seen them at the range I've seen people with autos and you know uh, tax stamp you know class class three uh, weapons that they you know require that kind of stuff but. Uh, my opinion, the one thing I don't like about it is, in, in uh, where I live, is to get like a suppressor, you have to get, you have two options. You file a paper with your local, uh, one of the local 
police municipalities or police departments that are in the, you know, be it the constable, local sheriff, or the police department. And they have to sign off on your paperwork saying they're okay with you having um, that kind of uh, class three weapon or or uh, accessory, whatever you want to call it. So suppressor, SBR, uh, full auto, whatever. And NFA so on. item. NFA item, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. So they have to they have to sign off on it, and the the current shit that we got here, in Antonio, came from I think it's from Illinois originally, uh, Illinois, and uh, that dipshit, uh, you know, they hired some did some big boy, you know, uh, sheriff from somewhere else, you know, to cover or police police chief to come here to straighten out San Antonio, and, and he won't even let he won't even let police officers have NFA items. Uh, much less anybody else, so you're not going to get that. So the only way you can really get it locally is through a tor to a trust, which is fine. But I just, I you know, trust trust are cool, but I don't like the idea of signing my stuff off to some uh, to where I no longer technically own them. They're in a trust, and um, and you have to you know get lawyers involved every time or or some paperwork involved every time you want to do something to it, and. Um, that's where I currently, but yes, uh, you know, uh, they're, 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 and hopefully, uh, it'll, it'll, uh, they're, they're, they also a vote, a bill for constitutional carry in, in, in Texas has been submitted as well, but uh, assistant uh, or lieutenant governor is already saying doesn't got a chance. Hillbilly's heartbeat of uh, you making it, um, and people are very upset with him, and they're, they're calling him out on Facebook and all the social media pro, pro, uh, platforms that are out there. But uh, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting because because I would like to see suppressors be readily available because it is it is silly. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, if you're to look at the amount of murders that are committed with suppressors or or, or uh, silencers, as is known, because they're obviously a, a, a tool of the you know the mob and assassins that just you know go around killing people. If you're gonna kill somebody, they you know, are in the movies. I mean, you know, yeah. but I don't know about real life. I mean. The P. I don't think people use them because, first of all, you know they're a hard. It makes it hard to conceal. You know, if you're if you add like you know, I don't know how big are they? Are they usually like twelve or thirteen inches or something like that? You know, it's a lot of length to add to a pistol. And you know, certain. I'm not an expert on them. I could just tell you that it's it's uh, Representative Jeff Duncan from South Carolina. It's House Resolution three six seven, um, uh, and. Um, it it's uh, uh in hawaii you know suppressors are illegal so i don't know what effect you know if it deals with you know state versus federal you know uh which is a whole nother thing but um uh, i just like to see a little more freedom i i don't think that they're really a weapon at all and they don't really silence anything they just you know reduce the volume a little bit so you don't go deaf if you like shooting you know which was like I said at the start of the chat, there was like uh, the guy who teaches the hunting course for the hunt that you have to take for the hunting uh, uh, class, one of them, he's deaf. He has to lip read. You know, if somebody asks him a question in the class, he has to lip read because he can't hear anything because he used to be the police shooting firearm shooting instructor and they, they don't allow the police to have suppressors, I guess, because he never had one and that's why he's deaf. So, you know, um, it would be nice if uh, people who value their hearing didn't have to lose it to exercise their Second Amendment rights. But I just don't think that, you know, people who exercise their fire, firearm rights are, are just get treated like second-class citizens and it gets treated oh, like it, a se second-class right, you know. And so, and it shouldn't be, you know. But, you know, most people that own guns are just regular Americans, you know, who are exercising their constitutional rights. and. They don't. Most people aren't who buy who want who own silencers aren't gonna, you know, become assassins, you know, overnight. You Think know. of it like this. Think of it like this. A lot of criminals acquire their firearms through illegal means. They don't have a problem with it, whether it be buying them on the black market or stealing them, mostly stealing them, things like that. They, they don't worry about whether they have a concealed carry license. They don't worry about if they take it in a gun-free zone. They don't, they don't obey any of the laws. That being the case, if criminals wanted to use suppressors on a regular basis, 
They'd be acquiring those illegally as well. They'd be having them made in machine shops or in barns. or I mean, somebody can actually make one of these on their own. You don't need to buy one. So if, if criminals are already breaking all of these laws with firearms and they're not, they're not finding all these gangbangers with suppressors, uh, then suppressors aren't a, a, uh, an item that, that is, that is uh, a, a criminal's choice. Otherwise, it, it would be all over the place. They would be, they would be you know, acquiring these uh, stolen or, or having people make them for them. or they, They'd find ways to get them. Yeah, but and it's not, it, it's, I think it's just the, the myth of, you know, the 60s, they would have these, you know, uh, movies or like Hawaii Five-0 would have, you know, the, the, the bad guy shows up and he's, he, you know, from, from an out-of-town shooter shows up to Hawaii and, and he, you know, puts in some kind of silencer and it just sounds like, you know, the, the, instead of a shot or any, you know, supersonic rifle crack, you, you, you would just be sound like a tiny little whisper of a puff. You know, which is not how it is. It doesn't sound like that at all. But it's like the, the it's like the movie culture has this what? myth of how quiet si- suppressors are, and they they call them silencers, but they don't silence a gunshot. My experience shooting suppressors or silencers on uh, a twenty two AR fifteen that was the closest you get to that movie experience we hear. Like, cause I remember. Uh, or was it the last, not this year's, but the year before, 2013, uh, 2014, uh, wait, 13, 14, 15, yeah, 2015's uh, Texas Firearms Festival, and I shot a, an FN rifle with a su- suppressor on it, to, to, chambered in 22, and a long rifle, and I remember, I, I was like, I shot, like they only gave it like five or six rounds to shoot, and I shot it, and I'm like, and I'm like, Okay, I didn't hear the vocal back, and it was that quiet. That was like the only thing you because it was a rifle round, rifle chamber, uh, you know, that length plus a suppressor on it. They it sounded like click, click, click. all I heard was a click, click, click. Did you, you have need, hearing on protectors on also? No, uh, no. you could you didn't need it because I mean, it just sounded like click, click, click. Watch well, it. No, I think I did because there was people right. shooting up in the area. Yeah, I did actually, but uh. But that's what it sounded like. It just heard click, 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 click. And uh, all you could hear was like the machine parts of the gun running. You really didn't hear like the, the burst coming off the ammunition or any sound coming off it. But when I shot like an MP9, yeah, you know, it has, you know, MP5, sorry, with the nine millimeter, uh, you know, with the suppressor on it. You can, you, you can, it, it's much more quieter than without it. Uh, but it, again, it's not like I'm going to sit there like you see like in, you know, you remember the old movies where they have fucking MP5s with silence and all that, and you said, you know, that, that it's really, really quiet, you know, full auto going off. Um, it's, it's not like that. And, and I mean, you know, I think the whole thing is that it's not going to have any effect on a supersonic, you know, breaking the sound barrier. I mean, it, so if you don't shoot subsonic rounds, I mean, you're still going to hear it when the bullet breaks the sound barrier, right? I mean, you know. I shot also a 300 blackout with the silencer on this past year, and it just it just kept the recoil down, kept it quiet, uh, but it but you could hear the round coming out. You know, it, it wasn't it wasn't and I had your had your protection as well, but you, know, you, you could just you could just it just made it much more uh, tolerant. Yeah, well, I hope it passes. I, you know, I, I value my hearing, and uh, you know, I like shooting. But I, I don't know if I, it's like I think there's a show called that. But you know, it's like um, I, I don't think it's really would be a weapon of choice of criminals because it, it it just makes it harder your weapon harder to conceal. Well, and, it, it's uh, it's like Bowie knives, for instance. I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up a little bit here, but. Like bully knives, a lot of places because they're well over like five and a half inches or whatever you know restriction you have in your living. Uh, how many people really get killed with bully knives? Oh, because they're they're, they're bad people. No, but if you've got a hard on to kill somebody, you're gonna you're gonna get whatever knife you got hand. It's a bully or you know a, a combat knife, or whatever. But no, the yeah, I've, I've heard of more people getting getting chopped up with a machete or a cleaver than a bully knife. <laughs> You know, but, but they don't they don't ban machetes or cleavers. <laughs> the the boomerangs are, are are the scary the, the bad boy. You, know, you just can't walk around with that. 
why would you have that on you? You're gonna you're gonna cut somebody up. You're gonna you know. Just, that's the only reason. The reason a bully knife is, is to carve a, a deer and you know to dress a deer and so on. So why do you really need that on you if, if you're walking the streets? And it's the same principle. You know, Hollywood has you know has taken given us so much, but taken away quite a bit as well. As far as the legislature that's been passed responding to all this shit, at the same at the same point, they don't stop Hollywood from making fucking movies. Yeah, that's no, true. I, yeah, I just got the accountant on DVD Blu-ray. I've been looking forward to seeing, and I saw speaking of Hollywood, I saw Assassin's Creed, and I really liked that. And that was very interesting as far as gun control. You know, it was like instead of gun control, what what the plot of that movie was um, that uh, the the, it was gov- the it was basically uh, the Knights Templar have want to prevent all forms of violence, so they they are searching for the uh, Apple of Eden, which is an artifact that is supposed to hold the DNA code that uh, uh, is uh, is responsible for uh, man's proclivity to violence, predisposition to violence. So if they can modify everyone's dna you know somehow with you know s- some technological method to um uh to remove this particular dna strand from human beings then they will they'll live in a peaceful world and the assassin's creed is trying to prevent them from finding this artifact because they believe in free will so it's 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 kind of and so they're they're they don't want you know, so basically it's like the Knights Templar are, you know, the government organization that wants to control the population and modify everyone's genetic code. The Assassin's Creed are, are believe in free will of mankind, and so they don't want the Knights Templar to find this artifact. And that's what the movie's about without giving any way any, uh, uh, without any spoilers, you know. There are knives in the movie, so I like I like that part of it. But, um uh, it's it and so what they do in the movie is just they send they they use the animus to what is is to they send they have they find people through the criminal justice uh, system and they you know they who they scan DNAs of all the prisoners in the prisons and if anybody is related to anyone that they know is in the Assassin's Creed then they send people through the animus uh, to uh, retrieve the memories of their ancestors and they go back into the time of the Spanish Inquisition when the Knights Templar were, you know, doing all this stuff uh, and looking, you know, for more actively. And so they want to find out where it's hidden by stealing these people's memories, basically. So they send them back in time, you know, uh, through the animus and they monitor them. And uh, they're trying to find this artifact. And um, so it it was a good movie. I liked it. I thought it was, the, the the plot was you know very uh, you know considering like how gun channels is about you know government control and free will of the people uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting movie you know whether you like guns or knives or both you know um, uh, it, it's like the government is not to, it's the people are supposed to be free and in charge of the government not the other way around so um, you know whether you're talking about the, the you know a cashless society or, or gun control or, you know, uh, modifying everyone's DNA, DNA so no one is ever violent anymore. There's no predisposition to violence. Because they were, they were talking about, you know, I think, uh, uh, remember the name of the actor? Something Iron. Jeremy Irons is, is like the politician who is like, you know, in charge of uh, uh, trying to control everyone or something. And, uh, uh, his daughter is a scientist who's, you know, like invented the animus to send people back in time to search for their memory, their genetic, the, the genetic memories of their ancestors. So oh, this is interesting. Anybody still out there? <laughs> is my hangout working? Uh, no, I'm just, I didn't go see the movie. I've watched my kid play the video games, but I, I, yeah. I didn't see the movie. I've never played that video game. Um, but I thought the re- the movie was remarkably uh, the plot was pretty ingenious and some of the lines were good. Um, what was the, the best line that I like? Oh yeah, some 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 uh, 
not not everything deserves to live was a really good line <laughs> but um anyway uh you know it's it, again it was free will versus total government control so you know and the night night templars representing you know the government some corporate entity that they had you know they had some plan to change the world's every, every human being's dna once they found out what part of it to eliminate from the human genetic code so anyway it's worth a, well, it's worth a good see you know it's a violent movie you know but uh there aren't any guns in it, I don't think. I don't recall any guns in it. So, so I'm not, it's all blade edge weapons, pretty much, and, and a few crossbows. It is, there's, it is. Uh, there's some flintlocks in the video game. Is it as violent as Steel Magnolias? <laughs> I don't think I saw that one. I've heard of it, but I had never saw it. But so, yeah, I saw Rogue One and, you know, Assassin's Creed. Those are the last two movies I saw. I don't know what to go see next. Uh, Patriot uh, Day is pretty cool. I thought it was a good movie. You saw it? Well, at home, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, it's still in the movie theaters. It just came out. Okay. You got it on cable or something, the pay-per-view? I, I have my ways. Okay, I want to ask what illegal thing you did to see it without paying. <laughs> you hacked your box or something, you know. Well, I have an apparatus. I'm sure you do. <laughs> but uh, that was a good flick. Huh? Didn't like it. Uh, didn't think I was going to learn much from it, but there, there's quite a, stuff, a bit of stuff that comes out, you know. And, you know, I eat, though, no spoilers because everybody kind of knows what the story is on that one. Um, you know, the outcome. But uh, it, the the funny part of it is like seeing the little brother. Man, he's like this. I, I've never had a little brother, but I know people that have that have had him. And yeah, that pain in the ass little brother. He's always like, "Let me do it. It's my turn. Let me do it. It's my turn. Let me do it. It's my turn. Come on, come on. Don't be like that. It's my turn. When's when's my turn?" And that's kind of the way the, <laughs> that little brother was, as far as like all the shit they did. It's like, you know, I get to shoot the gun. Let me shoot the gun. It's my turn to kill the cop. You know and and so on. It's just it's kind of it's kind of annoying. But uh, all well, together, I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay, it, it, what's the, what's the basic plot about? Well, it's a, it's about the Boston um, bombing, the the, the Boston uh, marathon uh, bombing. I kind, of, I, I kind of took that in, and I was trying to figure out why anybody would want to go see a movie about that. There, there, there's stuff they talk about. Hopefully, they're not embellishing. They are keeping it. They're not making the script juicy. You know, the one you'll see it that they're talk, they talk about stuff I never heard about, which is kind of neat. You know, more like the reason like why they went to go kill that cop at the university, and so on and this and that. And again, the other stuff and the details and, and the wife and her attitude and her dis, displacement with what was going on. You know, she was an American um, Muslim, not a converted. And so on of, of the of the older brother, but uh, uh, it's a pop, you know anything Mark Wahlberg touches these days is popular. You know, so. Marky Mark. All right. Well, I think I, I've been I wanted I've been wanting to say something about something that somebody posted on Gun Channels a while ago, uh, a few days back. It was like that I said something about. Uh, that somebody said, uh, okay, well, uh, just recently, you know, uh, Israel got like two F-35, you know, uh, fighters from America, two, you know, and everybody knows all the problems that they've had with that program, the cost overruns, the, you know, uh, the issues, you know, that from, there's a whole joint concurrency report about everything, all the problems that they had with that, that was written by the, uh, Air Force general who's in charge of the, the training program, you know, not some just critic on the internet, but the actual guy in charge of the program, you know, wrote the report on everything that's wrong with it. And, um, but I don't know, maybe they fixed a lot of the problems, but uh, somebody uh, on Gun Channels complained that, well, Israel bombed uh, Syria, so now that's going to be problems for America because Israel did that. But I mean, 
realistically, first of all, Syria is bombed every day by the United States, Russia, you know, sometimes France and Britain bomb Syria, and sometimes Turkey and every day Syria bomb. Even Syria bombs Syria. Syria bombs Syria, yes. I was waiting <laughs> for you to say that. Even Syria bombs Syria, so who yes. cares if Israel bombs Syria, you know, like one day out of the year, you know? But it's, and, and it's like every time there's an explosion, in anywhere in Syria that nobody knows what it was, it'll they'll they'll say, oh, it must have been those two Israeli F thirty fives. It's like the boogeyman, and it's just like you know people get out there and they like to blame Israel for everything. You know, Israel did start the war in Syria. You know, and and it it would be going on whether Israel is there or not. Uh, you know, and um, I don't know. I think I saw something today that says the U.S. and Russia are gonna have there's some possibility that they were going to have a joint plan, joint strike to take back Palmyra, uh, which is a historically relevant city in Syria, you know, and that would be really interesting to have the Americans and the Russians and the Syrians on the same side in a joint military operation. But, you know, and, and you know, somebody and whoever, whoever posted, one for the people who posted it said, like, remember the USS Liberty or something. And, and that was like in the six day war I, when Israel was like, um, I mean, this is they're, they're, they're reaching for stuff, and it's like it, it, there's people. Everybody bashes Israel because they always do. You know, everybody always blames the Jews. You know, or bashes Israel. And it's like okay, like in John McCain's father, Admiral McCain, in like 1960, I think it was a 1963 war. Uh, that was the war where Israel sent its air force in a sneak attack to shoot down on to destroy on the ground the Egyptian air force. And so they sent in their entire air force to white to attack all the MiG fighters on the ground in Egypt. And the moment that they sent, you know, right when they were sending the the fight, Israeli fighters over, Admiral McCain sends in a USS intelligence ship to find out what's happening into the combat zone. And somebody, some Israeli general or Air Force general, decided to blow it out of the water. And you know, because if they would have lost that battle, if they, the, the Israel would have gotten wiped out. And their whole country was on the line. And so it was just a stupid order to send that ship there in the first place. And, you know, but these every every couple of years, the Arab oil sheiks send their, um, they, they have a website, you know, about it, uh, this one attack uh, that happened in 1963 or something, or, you know, I forgot what year that particular war was. And, you know, it's before I was born, I think. And, and but these Arab oil sheiks who just, you know, have a vested interest in bashing Israel, they pay for these luncheons. And, and I, I've seen them on C-SPAN sometimes. They'll broadcast them. And it'll start out with three or four, you know, anti-Israel hate speeches. And then they'll have, they'll, they'll, they'll send up a couple of um, the sailors from that ship, you know, and say, yeah, Israel shot our ship out of the water. And... You know, uh, but the, the truth is, you know, why don't they blame Admiral McCain, who sent them in the, into a combat zone in the first place? You know, it was just Israel isn't an America's enemy. You know, I mean, and it's just people want a reason to bash Israel. And so, you know, if they if and if if there's an explosion in Syria that nobody can explain, they'll blame it on you know, or anywhere in the Middle East, they'll blame it on those two Israeli F thirty five. You know. And it's, it's just, you know, they don't need a reason to hate Jews and bash Israel. They don't want the country to be there. But it's really funny when you watch those, you know, uh, Liberty luncheons on CNN and, and there's these a group of, you know, Arab oil sheiks in the back of the room smiling, grinning from ear to ear, you know, and they're, you know, they pay for the website. They pay for that, you know, to happen every couple of years and keep that thing going in the media. I don't even like talking about it, you know, but it did happen sucks you know i mean i understand their whole country they had to win that war and I, I, it, it was supposed to be a surprise attack you know that's the only way that they could was to they could destroy beat the egyptian air force and you know they i think they destroyed several hundred mig fighters on the ground before they took off because it was a su surprise attack you know and uh you know the victory is not the victory was not you know guaranteed in that battle, you know, it was a war, you know, and 
war sucks. If people get killed, and you know, but yeah, you know, it's just like everybody is always looking for a reason to bash Israel, and so it's like I just hate it when I see that kind of thing posted. You know, um, that you know, oh look, this is going to be problems. We gave look, we gave Israel two F thirty fives, and they bombed Syria. But everybody bombs Syria every day. Syria bombs Syria. That's how the war got started, bombing their own people. You know. So I don't know if anybody else has another opinion. Go ahead and talk if you do. You're not going to get me to bash Israel. I'm I'm with Israel, but uh, wouldn't it be interesting if they blamed the F-35s and then found out that they've been sitting on the ground for weeks because they're so expensive to fly, they don't even take them up in the air? Or the only missions they've gone on are training missions because they're trying to get all their guys up to speed. More than likely, their guys trained over here with them before the fighters got over there. So that that excuse might not fly, but they might say, yeah, they're too expensive to operate. So they've been sitting in the hangar for a month. Well, yeah, they haven't even had them a month yet. I think they've had them like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> planes, yeah. planes, planes do a lot of setting on the ground and ships do a lot of setting in port. Um, you know, trucks do a lot of setting at, at the motor pool. A, a lot of stuff sets for a while. You know, a lot of guns are, are, are in the armory and a lot of ammos at the ammo dump. Uh, so, yeah, they, I'm sure that uh, they're the scapegoat for a lot of stuff, but um, they're, they're in a tight spot over there, and they're, they're, doing, they're doing what they need to do to, to survive. I'm glad they're our ally. Me but too. Since, uh, since my mic is working, yay. When, I, when, when I saw your IFAC video, I wrote down three questions. Two. You, al you already answered one of them. Okay. Uh, so one of my questions was about the tourniquet, but you already explained this. You, the Israeli bandage can be used as a tourniquet. Now, I was wondering if you, because because uh, some of the tourniquets they've got for the first aid kits are so small, they're they're compact. I mean, it's more or less just a really long bandage or something. I wasn't sure if you were going to uh, count a belt as a tourniquet, but what if you're not well, wearing a belt, or what if the person you're helping is not wearing a belt? But if the Israeli bandages act as a tourniquet and they're already in there then, you know, you're not taking up any extra space. So that fixes one thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to know about is what about alcohol wipes or something to clean a wound or clean up blood after you've, you've treated a wound? Did you consider putting thing, anything in there or was it just the fact that it might dry up too quick or? My, my experience was what, when I was taught how to change the bandages after my surgery, it was with um, wound wash. And that was too big. The, the containers that I've ever seen are all too big. Um, okay. uh, it's basically wound wash. You get them at, um, oh, okay, hey, thanks. Edge has got to go. Thanks for coming, Edge. I appreciate it. Um, it yeah, so I did a video on wound wash, but it's it's basically, you know, uh, either long drugs or they sell it at Walmart. And, and it's, it's like a spray of just a... a, a Salt, salty. It's basically sterilized water with a little bit of salt, uh, saline water, saline solution, and it sprays the wound clean. But I, I just didn't have room for it in that small of a bag. I mean, I have okay. it in my first main big medical bag, but there just wasn't any room. And given that the whole idea of just the first aid bag isn't isn't going to be a, you know, it's just to get to the hospital in one piece, you know, um, and and not you know alive without bleeding out. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, if, if I need that, I'd have to have my first aid bag, my big bag with me because it just wasn't going to fit in that tiny little bag because the okay. bottles that I've seen are too big to fit in that bag. All right. That makes sense. The other thing I wrote down was, um, you got the aspirin and I'm glad that you mentioned that they were low dose aspirin, by the way. So I'm guessing that's more for a heart condition than for pain, but if not it was pain. For, not okay, pain. so it wasn't okay. Then that that then that takes away the whole. Did you not put ibuprofen in there for pain and swelling because it might get mixed up with the aspirin? But if the uh, if the aspirin isn't there at all for pain, it's just strictly for heart. Then I could understand why you wouldn't have ibuprofen for swelling. Yeah, so. um, yeah, the the it. Uh, you know, again, it's a first aid kit to get you to the hospital in one piece, you know, and um, it's, it, it, you know, the aspirin prevents uh, platelets from sticking together 
and uh, sticking to your heart. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of medical advice that if you know if somebody has a heart attack and aspirin is, you know, can can save their life. Um, uh, and uh, I take one low dose every day because my cardiologist told me to. But uh, so I know it can help. You know, it, it, and if somebody gets shot, you know, accidentally or you know has, has some trauma, they can have a heart problem right there. You know, and in addition, but if they're bleeding out, then you don't want to give them aspirin because that'll right. it'll make them bleed. But if that's not an issue and they just had a heart attack, then by all means, give them two aspirin. You know, or give them all five. You know, they're, they're eighty-one low dose, eighty-one milligram low dose aspirin, uh, and that's what I take one every day. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's only for you know, uh, 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 heart somebody who has a heart condition, which could happen after the shock to your, your system. Somebody gets you know has a shock, they could have a heart attack in addition to being shot. You know, and in which case, if you could stop the bleeding, you know, uh, one at one low dose aspirin. I'm not a medical doctor. I can't give good advice, so I, you know, I probably shouldn't even try. Um, but no, I know but that. now I understand better why you you equipped it the way you did. I knew that space was a consideration, and you weren't trying to uh, to replicate a, a, a full kit. You know, something really big that would be in, in in a bigger pack. So those were just the only three things I could think of that might might squeeze in there. And just wondering if you re what your reasonings were, but now I understand, and it, it all makes sense. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad it made sense. Um, you know, uh, uh, there are some real. I've seen on the internet some you know straight tourniquets and stuff that that are like um, like the military invention of the of the decade or something. And you know, the best, like they won the, the this is the best tourniquet, the best military invention ever is this particular kind of tourniquet. But I don't have one of those. I know Israeli bandages can be used as tourniquets. There's some videos yeah. out there on how to use them that way, but we, uh, we either used a belt or we would use the triangular bandage in the first aid kit. But now, I was in the military 25 years ago, and you know things, some things have changed since then. Also, the kind of job that I did, uh, whether we were in training or or when when we were deployed or whatnot. I didn't carry a first aid kit, and, and the other guys I know didn't carry a first aid kit, but it was mostly, I think, I believe, because we always had Navy medical personnel with us at all times, and those guys were just as tough as any Marine. They carried uh, big first aid kits, I mean, these huge packs, and we had first aid kits on all the aircraft, and I was with a, a, an aviation you know, unit. I was with, with uh, a helicopter squadron, so we the aircraft were nearby at all times, so... It was really something that we didn't need to carry uh, in our 782 gear. Um, but when I got out and I bought my own cartridge belt and my own uh, harness and all the other stuff, I did get the, the, the first aid kit, the small one that comes in a plastic box that you can clip onto a cartridge belt with the, uh, with the Alice clips. And I do keep some stuff in that, even though I, I don't really wear the thing. I, I mean... I haven't worn it in I don't know how long. I'm sure it doesn't fit anymore. I'd have to adjust it. But I think the the reason was just because of this particular type of job and the fact that we had three Navy medical personnel attached to our squadron and we had so many big first aid kits nearby at any given time. Other Marines might have carried a personal first aid kit. I do remember in our um, battlefield uh wound treatment training, I can't remember what they called it, uh, battlefield first aid or battlefield wound care or something like that, they would say to take the bandage out of the wounded person's first aid kit on their on their cartridge belt. Don't take, don't use yours. So there, there's probably a situation where uh, there would be a unit of Marines where everybody would carry some sort of small first aid kit, even if they had a corpsman attached to their uh, unit too so what 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 exactly is the 782 kit because i'm sure nobody i don't know nobody oh, uh, 782 gear i don't even know what 782 stands for but 782 gear is like your normal gear like your cartridge belt your h harness your canteens your canteen covers uh your gas mask your bayonet with a with a frog uh your flashlight uh Compass, if you got one, your shelter half, your Alice pack, your uh, poncho, your poncho liner, maybe uh, your sleeping bag, 
uh, your waterproof bag that your sleeping bag goes in. Uh, we call those Willie Peters. Uh, what else was in there? And it's pretty much just all your your your, your entrenching tool with uh, your entrenching tool cover, stuff like that. So it's seventy. That's a lot there. of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. That's it. Sounds oh, like yeah. a basic loadout is what it is. Oh yeah, and and yeah, and that's really kind of what it is. But now your seven eighty two gear. Uh, could just consist of like your H harness with your cartridge belt and whatever's hanging off your cartridge belt. And I usually just hung that at the end of my rack or had that somewhere where I could just throw it on. That didn't necessarily mean my Alice pack and all the other stuff. But um, yeah, we called it 782 gear or deuce gear. We even joked around and called it douche gear. But um, yeah, so when I so when I say 782 gear, I usually just mean uh, just like my harness and my cartridge belt and everything that hangs off of it. Like right now, I've got an M12 holster on mine and uh, magazine pouch and stuff like that, but I mean that's that's the one I have in the civilian world. I had to buy all that stuff surplus after I got out. Yeah, well, when you're a civilian, you can't just call medic or corpsman. You know, you've got to be your own medic and corpsman. So you have to have something. Uh, and um, well, I am a first responder at work. I take first aid training almost every year, whether I want to or not, because they make me. And uh, I will say that. Um, I've taken a lot of classes. Only one of them did I really consider good. Um, uh, they, they changed it up every so often. You know, they'll say, well, you know, the thing that we taught you last year, well, now they've thought of something new or, or you know, do, telling you to do the uh, chest compressions to staying alive and stuff like that. I mean, there's just, uh, you know, how to use an AED. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I learned in the military about, you know, how to deal with somebody uh, – uh, who got injured on the battlefield or, or injured uh, in some sort of training accident or injured working on the aircraft or something like that is same thing in the, uh, in the civilian world. We had a guy uh, die at work and they revived him with an AED. And it was because of training uh, that the person, the person right next to him happened to be a first responder that had gone to these classes with me. And what's you know, an AED? AED is an automatic external defibrillator. Now that's something oh, okay. you wouldn't keep yeah. in your first aid kit, but oh yeah, those are. But those. but in the civilian first aid training, that's something that the, that uh, you know uh, is offered and stuff. And I mean, some of it's just like what a little bit like what an EMT would get. Definitely not not to the full degree an EMT would get, and and a little bit like the uh, training we got in the military on first aid, even though we weren't Navy corpsmen. You know, so you, you count on the trained professionals, like you were saying, yours is just to, to, to deal with it so you can get to a place where you can get a medical treatment. And But uh, any sort of first aid training is good. I mean, it, it's it's kind of scary if you have to do it. I have not had to revive anybody, but, uh, you know, even if you screw up while you're doing it, it's better than the person just laying there dying. You, they still stand a better chance if, if you're forgetting a step or... or or just really nervous or whatnot, but uh, I, I think the the training is uh, just as good as having uh, you know a, a kit, no matter what size it is. Yeah, I think you know when in doubt, call nine one one. I mean, those those guys have all you know on the ambulances uh, have they have training, EMS training, and they're heroes. You know, they save yeah. people every day. They save people from being buried every day, and. Um, so I got so much respect for those people, and you know, same same at the people in the emergency room, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, um, uh, if I ever had a problem, I, I I never felt safer than I did in the emergency room at Queens Hospital. Uh, you know, they could deal with anything, you know, um, and they have to put up with a lot of shit to work there, you know, because there's there's a lot of uh, you know, I mean, some of the patients are just like they're you know. One time I was there, and then the guy in the gurney next to me was like, you know, when is the bitch nurse going to bring my, you know, pain? Because he was, like, addicted to painkillers. It was so obvious, you know. You know, where's my painkillers? And, you know, it's like. Well, it's not just that. It's how many times does somebody actually die in there, and they're, they are there to witness it, and they have to take that home, and they have to deal with it, even if they weren't the one treating the patient or even if they were was nothing they could do but they tried everything anyhow they still have to to deal with that because they live around that and it, it's it's not easy I, i'm i'm sure it's not easy you know yeah, but, and when uh, you're in the, and when you're in the hospital they have a whole hospital full of doctors at queens and you know when somebody's life is under threat you know there'll be an announcement throughout the entire hospital like you know 
code blue in the emer you know in ER you know and all 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 the you know they call whatever team they you know of doctors they they need to save someone's life you know and and it won't matter what the hell else the doctor is doing at the moment you know everybody will run to the ER you know and try and save whoever needs you know if there's a problem you know uh, but it so, takes a special kind of person to be able to deal with that not just the the you know people that are are are, are, are on on something and and not acting normal or the people that are you know got gross stuff squirting out of their body somewhere or, yeah. or oh yeah and there was a lady know, but, there was a lady in the ER who had um what was her she had you know she was just dealing with uh, really a mental hardship of having uh to because she had to have kidney dialysis all the time and uh boy she was having a hard time just having to deal with that you know dialysis all the time and because it, it like there's pain involved with you know it you know in some way that i couldn't understand but boy she was you know clearly suffering and the staff was trying to help her but you know uh it's it's sometimes there's just nothing that they can do to stop pain you know uh from you know dialysis of you know uh, and uh you know, but I don't know. I've also known old ladies who just go to kidney dialysis, and it's like you know, changing a bandage or something. But you know, sometimes you're in the ER, and it definitely wasn't like the other, you know, some of the other people that I've known. Where so it's like they just deal with every kind of medical situation twenty four seven. You know, when they're in the ER, it's like you only get you know the worst case scenarios most of the time. So yeah, you know, that that's that's when I put the kit together. I wasn't trying to you know build something that could you know save an, anybody from everything, and it wasn't like my full medical kit either. It was just you know what's going to happen if I'm at the range? Okay, I'm going to need to stop bleeding and get to a hospital. You know, uh, okay. and and uh, or somebody could have a heart attack. You know, throw them an aspirin or two and get them to the hospital quick. You know, because I can't save somebody from that, you know, and, you know, somebody can easily go into shock and have, you know, if they get something happens at a range and, and besides getting shot, have a heart attack at the same time because they were shot, you know, so um, whether by accident or something, you know, so, um, you know, that, that's why there's aspirin, but, you know, bandage, tourniquet bandages and, um, you know, uh, but to be honest with you, I, I'd probably bring my whole medical kit you know, to the range every time, you know, uh, but I, I wouldn't wear the medical bag, you know, because it's kind of bulky to run around, uh, to go running and gunning with the medical bag, you know, but I have one. I did, you know, the full bag. I did do a load out of the full bag because there's just so much stuff in there. Um, and, um, you know, and it has all the, you know, like um, hemostats and stuff like that. And uh, I, I haven't taken a course on, you know, Suture doing sutures, so I didn't buy any sutures. You know, they're not super expensive or anything. But since I didn't, I mean, I know how to sew basic things, but I just, I, I don't think I would, you know, hazard it. And you know, I'd rather just, I mean, if the shit hits the fan and there's no emergency services and nobody's at the hospital, then I guess you would need to know how to do that. But uh, I haven't really got went into that because I just don't know how to do it. I know there's courses you can take, and it's, it's not like rocket science, but you know, uh, I just haven't gotten into, you know, that kind of training or the training, the training that you've had. But. Well, I, I only do it because my boss makes me, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the fire extinguisher training we take every year. And, and it's like, who here in the class has actually put out a fire with a fire extinguisher? And you look to the left, you look to the right, you leave a look up front to the instructor. Nobody raises their hand. I raise my hand. You know, and then the instructor turns it over to me, and it's like, oh, hold up, hold up. Why are you teaching this class if you've never actually put out a fire? But um, you know, I, I I probably forget more than than I should. I mean, I should know more. I should keep more retained. So taking the class every year is probably good for me. And every now and then, there's a change to it. And you know, it's just like when I learned it in uh, in the military. I I learned it because they said you're going to get tested on this and you need to be able to pass the test. But I was there thinking to myself, I don't want to have to do this. I mean, I would, I, I would definitely. You know, I have a funny fire story. I was, I had, I had gone to a cooking class. Uh, well, it was a cooking demonstration on mushrooms because I was in LA and it seemed like a nice diversion from dubbing. Uh, and, uh, 
uh, so I went to this class and, and the guy was teaching, you know, like this expert chef on, you know, how to cook mushrooms, you know, a certain way. And you know, he says, it's really important to have a really high flame, you know, and, and to heat the oil. So when I went back to make it, so I followed his instructions, it turned up, heated the oil really hot, and then I threw in the mushroom. The whole pan, just like everything went up in flames. <laughs> and I was like, well, what do I do now? The whole, you know, there's this huge, gigantic, you know, flame eruption burning straight up into the air and so my mom comes over just puts the pan over the 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 the, the cover of the, over the pan and the thing comes out <laughs> like i didn't even think to just oh wait yeah turn off the oxygen and the flame stops you know but <laughs> yeah yeah and that's and just used that's to cooking more than me you know but that's that's so never follow an expert mushroom chef's instructions word for word <laughs> I would have burned down the whole house if she wasn't there. It was funny. Uh, well, I'm, well, <laughs> I guess you don't want to put water on a grease fire, but <laughs> yeah, she, you just throw a pan. She just threw the cover, yeah. the pan cover yeah. over the over the over the oil in the pan, and it just instantly there was no oxygen, and so there was no fire instantaneously. But I will tell you this, you got me thinking, why don't I have a first aid kit in my range bag? I just checked my range bag, and the closest thing to a first aid kit that I have in there is sunblock. Okay, that's not going to help. So I've got three first aid kits over here. I've got one to mount on a wall, one for a vehicle, and one that fits in a fanny pack, but I don't wear a fanny pack yet. I'm old, but I'm not that old. And uh, I'm looking through this, and it looks like some of the stuff's going to have to be replaced. It's been sitting in there for a while, but some of the other stuff is still good. So what I need to do is I need to get this thing up to date and I need to get it in my range bag. Cause even though the range I go to on a normal basis, um, it, uh, uh, the, the, uh, range masters do keep stuff up in their tower and I've seen them give out bandages and I've seen them clean some wounds and stuff like that. Um, uh, I should keep this. There's room in my range bag for this. There's no excuse for not carrying this. So now you got me thinking. I appreciate that. I'm going to. Well, if I saved one life by making that video, if I save one life by making that video, it'll have been well worthwhile, you know, or just, you know, it, it's it, where I, where I go shooting, there's nobody there and there's not one soul to help you. So, you know, and the cell phone reception sucks too. So, you know, you know, heal thyself, you know, it's a shooter heal thyself is, is the deal. So, uh, uh, where I go and, uh, it's just a state hunting area. And, um, sometimes there's people there on Saturdays, but usually there's nobody there anymore, especially after the new hunting laws made almost everything illegal there. Uh, you know, without, I'm not going to get off target and complain about the, the governor of the state of Hawaii and DLNR, but, uh, Cause I've done that before, so I <laughs> refer you to previous chats. But um, yeah, so if you can, if it helps one person, you know, be prepared, you know, to to uh, cut, you know, stop the bleeding and and you know, jump into, you know, you need to be able to stop the bleeding, jump into a car, and get to a hospital quick. Because um, you know, eventually, loss of blood will take your life. And Israeli bandages aren't that expensive, you know, and they they alert their tourniquets. So um, now, what's the deal with those? Is there are they treated with anything like uh, some of the nope. military bandages are now, or nope, nope. There's some videos on how to use Israeli bandages on YouTube. You can check those out. I I didn't want to open crack one open and break the seal on any of mine. I mean, I have a few extra. I suppose I could, but um, you know, no, that's all right. I can look it yeah. up. There's instructions on the, the the package, but yeah, there's there's YouTube videos on how to use it. I don't need to make one, um, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's just uh, just look it up on YouTube. I um, I'm not a medical expert on it or anything, but um, I tried to put everything I could fit into that small kit, you know, that so I could stop bleeding and you know. Uh, get to a hospital if something went wrong um, or if something went wrong and somebody else got hurt and uh, in that particular kit. But yeah, I would like to add a little more stuff to my main medical bag and get a full-size military tourniquet and throw that in my medical bag and have my medical bag with me at all times. But, you know, I, I, 
realistically, the medical bag is, again, I'm not going to be carrying it on me. Uh, it, it would be like in my car when I go up to the range at best. And it'd be just if something went wrong. I'd probably need it like right then and there, you know. So uh, having something you could just strap onto your belt made sense to me. Um, so that's why I put that one together. Um, and uh, but anyway, I don't like I don't like to be a safety range safety you know crazy person. But it's just something I wanted to add uh, to my channel, and maybe it'll help one person when they need it to have a range uh, uh, individual uh, first aid kit. Because um, uh, if you're going to have a gun and you're going to have ammo and you're going to go shooting, you know, where other people, maybe they aren't as safe as you, you know, uh, who don't always keep everything pointed down range or just some, there's a malfunction of some firearm, you know, it, it, they do happen from time to time, those things. So. Um, oh, yeah. I've gotten hammer bite. I've gotten slide bite. Uh, you know, that sort of thing, and you got the blood trickling down your thumb, and, you know, you're looking over at your kids, and you're trying not to say anything. You know, it doesn't it doesn't hurt that bad, but you know once your thumb isn't numb anymore, it's, it's going to hurt, and it's not going to be as easy to hold that gun. And, you know, you don't want the blood dripping everywhere and scaring everybody, so, you know, just trying to be a little <laughs> lucky about it and thinking, why didn't I put some Band-Aids in this range bag? So, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but I do have that stuff for cleaning wounds uh, in my uh, wound wash, and, and, uh, and basically, yeah, I had to change bandages uh, for the uh, incisions uh, in my leg uh, where they pulled out some sections of artery for a graft when I had bypass surgery, but, uh, and I had to clean it every day. So, um, you know, after I moved out of the rehab hospital. Uh, so, um, you know, yeah, you basically, Take off the old bandage, spray the shit out of it, you know, and then uh, with the wound wash spray, you know, it's just saline solution of, you know, purified water and a tiny bit of salt. And, and then you, you know, put on a little piece of gauze and tape it down and then it's good to go for a day and then do the same thing the next day. And if you don't wash it every day, it won't heal, you know, it, it'll, or it'll heal very slowly or it'll, you know, cause it's going to ooze. You know, if you have a deep cut, it's going to ooze all kinds of, you know, uh, white blood cells and stuff. So it has to wash or it won't get, you know, it'll get infected. And then and then you can, you know, lose your life again. So, it, you know, having that, but that that's like a long-term thing. And, it, it, and you know, a day-to-day -day care. And that, that you could put in your medical bag. And so it's definitely, I didn't think it was in the first aid kit because it's not first aid it's it's like more like a long term you know you have to do it every day but it's not like the first thing you do uh, necessarily you know the first thing you do is stop the damn bleeding and you know then you know every day you clean it um, but um, and so I definitely recommend wound wash in your medical bag and and uh, lots of it uh, for long term but um, anyway so uh, I, I, has anybody heard? Have you heard any of the any cool guns at Shot Show or anything? I know Shot Show is happening, and every, a lot of gun channels people are at Shot Show. Uh, no, a lot of gun channels people are real geeked about going to Shot Show. It's a great chance for you know people to to that maybe only talk to each other uh, to, over this to actually meet in person and do some stuff together and. I know it's a great chance to make some content if you're shooting videos and stuff like that. Plus, who doesn't want to see, uh, you know, the new stuff? It's like the auto show here in Detroit. You know, it's it's going on right now, and uh, it's a big thing. Everybody goes there, even if they're not buying a new car, even though, but it is something that inspires some of the people to, to buy a new car, but people want to see the new cars. The thing about SHOT Show that I don't like is that, some of the stuff they'll show at SHOT Show, and it's a year or two later, and it's still not available for sale. And <laughs> that, that know, drives me nuts. Uh, it drives me nuts because, you know, I, I, my most watched video is like on uh, a rifle that IWI put out at the Euro Satori arms show in Paris. And they said, okay, this is going to be available. Like, you know, I think it was like three years ago or something. And it got like fifty-seven thousand views on my channel, and I'm like, okay. And and 
you know, it, it didn't make their first, it wasn't available when IWI said it was going to be available. You know, and then people get mad at me, you know, like it's my fault or something. And then like a year later, you know, uh, there's all, it'll be, it'll be ready for the next SHOT Show for sure. And then the next SHOT Show rolls by and it wasn't ready, you know, the for the IWI's Lapua. So I don't know if it, and, and you know, so then I'll, I'll just I'll try and update the, you know, uh, um, video description, you know, on with, with it, whatever IWI said it was going to send it, said it's going to be ready. But, you know, it's not the guy, I, all I did was they, they had, you know, uh, a brochure on this new rifle. It looked cool. So I posted it to check out IWI's new rifle. And, but it's still, last time I checked, it wasn't, they said it was going to be available, you know, like October this year, finally. And, but that was, it, it, they keep, you know, it's like a vapor rifle. Either that or they're only selling it to the government. But as far as the public, availability it's like vaporware you know it's like they keep promising it and, and so i don't know maybe it's available now the lapua iwi lapua rifle it looked fucking awesome but you know i don't know how much it cost and they kept pushing it back but don't blame me if iwi keeps promising you know uh stuff and you know then it, it then you know the deadline doesn't work out for one reason or the other maybe they just have a ton of government orders and they can only fill those you know um, uh, from, you know, Britain or, you know, they sold a lot, maybe they sold a lot at the Arms Bazaar in Paris to governments and they just don't have any for civilians yet. Uh, but, um, so I, yeah, that was really weird that I would have 57,000 views on a rifle and if they keep just pushing it back, it's like IWI was personally trying to fuck up my channel. <laughs> I made this video, they got 57,000 views and they keep pushing back the, uh, you know, public availability of the rifle, but, you know, I don't think they were doing it. I just think it was just maybe they sold too many to governments and they didn't have uh, uh, any available for civilians. They had too many military orders. And in the end, I guess that would be their best customer for, uh, you know, a long range. Yeah. They're going to fill rifle. the contracts first. They, they're definitely going to fill the contracts first. Yeah. Um, so I suppose if I had the time and the money to go to SHOT Show and I could get into SHOT Show, I would because it's Las Vegas and I love Las Vegas. I love uh, Texas Hold'em, man. I, I love, I just could play Texas Hold'em forever. And I'm, I, I'm, I just, you know, I just, just go all in. in. Vegas. I don't have to gamble. Well, I like Texas Hold'em, but you know, everybody has yeah. their, you know, yeah, reason for going to Vegas. You know, it's, Oh, there's nothing wrong with gambling. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with gambling. I just, I, I go there for so much more than that. So, you know, if there was this gigantic one of a kind gun show there, that would just be icing on the cake. But, uh, yeah, I'll probably never, uh, never be I'll try and show. make it next year. You know, I'll try and make it next year. Uh, I, I've been wanting to try and let G webs or, or somebody from gun channel try and do a knife versus gun, you know, with my, one with my, with my practice dull karambit, you know, and because uh, because the, they were beating up Bob earlier, or they it was it was Hashnazi was doing a sharpie attack as a as a as a uh, knife situ knife situation attack to see if Bob could do anything besides get killed, and I think he he lost every fight or something, <laughs> but poor Bob, poor biker Bob. <laughs> Well, a lot of people have been uh, a lot of people were, were were waiting for this this showdown. So I think some people were trying to uh, instigate it and hype it up a little bit. So uh, it well, was bound was to funny. happen. It was funny. They were it both was bound fun. to happen. They were both yeah, fun, yeah, so. yeah. No, no, I don't. I don't mean in any sort of negative way at all. I just it, it was bound to happen. Yeah. Well, it was fun to watch the daily show, daily gun show this morning. I, I enjoyed it. Um, Anyway, so uh, definitely if you guys are listening out there and want to learn about guns and Second Amendment rights, check out gunchannels.com. It's free over there. You know, there's a lot of people that like guns that they don't always agree with each other, but everybody there pretty much believes in, like, you know, freedom and the Constitution and all that. And, and uh, um, you know, it's a good way to stay up to date on what's happening, not just because there's people at SHOT Show, but, you know, there's always somebody talking and there's always a chat and hangout and, People, if something happens that's important, 
uh, with regard to Second Amendment rights. So somebody on gun channels will be talking about it, or there'll be a post, uh, and uh, on you know one of the shows or in the lobby or something. But um, it's just another way to keep in you know and keep your you know uh, keep informed about what's going on uh, in uh, with as far as American uh, rights uh, for the people. Um, and uh, so I don't know what else to talk about. Uh, let's see. We had the IFAC kit. We had the shot show. We had the Bob versus Hashnazi thing, <laughs> and and um, we had the whole uh, the miss the 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 the, the F thirty five that that may or may not have dropped a bomb somewhere in Syria a couple days ago, <laughs> and uh, um, I don't know. I think that's almost everything, uh, except for, well, of course, you're waiting for Donald. DJ Trump. Can we call him DJ Trump? Because I think that'll make, you know, it's, this is Martin Luther King Day. We should call him DJ Trump instead of, because that, that sounds like hip. DJ Trump. Like MC Rove. Uh, <laughs> MC Hammer. DJ Trump, you know. Yeah. Um, Donald John Trump. Know. DJ. That's his initials. I guess. Hey, well, uh, I don't, yeah, but why hasn't anybody used that up to now? Um, probably it's politically incorrect. Oh. <laughs> to go, I mean, you know, just wait, wait. Put, put an the A honorable, The honorable DJ Trump. DJ Master, the, the mass, honorable Master DJ Trump. Yeah, the, the, Mr. Funkadelic himself, DJ Trump. <laughs> I don't think they're going to introduce him as Mr. Funkadelic, DJ Trump. You know, but um, except on my show, I guess. You know. Uh, so yeah, Dead Horse said I've made his night of working on guns go much faster over there. So if you're on gun channels, I'm on uh, my little uh, chat window thing uh, for all my um. Lock and load Monday night chats is on gunchannels.com slash HVS for Hawaii Volcano Squad. That's my channel on YouTube. And um, basically I do knives, guns, a little bit of prepping. Once in a while I complain about, you know, economics. And I think I have a going to – I shot some video of like a gold coin that I have. And I think I'll post it in a day or two. But um, I absolutely have no idea which way – Precious metals are going to go, or what's going to happen to the economy, or whether DJ Trump and Putin are going to get along. <laughs> oh, are you going to do a follow-up video on that uh, CZ, the one that's uh, chambered in seven six two by thirty nine Russian? Why? Well, as yeah, my foot's been slowly getting better. You know, I spent all today hanging down at by with my foot soaking in the jacuzzi with drinking beer with those, you know, teenage blonde chicks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I think the beer will help you heal faster. There's, it there's was free beer. beer. It yeah, was oh, free well, beer. I, I'm just, you know, you're already in Hawaii, okay? You don't have to rub it in with the free beer. The free beer and the blondes in bikinis. <laughs> they're, 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 they're underage. I didn't do anything but I, you know, uh, look at them. I mean, I wasn't even looking at them. I generally look at trees, but... They were racing because the, the the condo manager was like, you know, giving away some toy or something, and so I was just you know drinking free beer, sitting there with my foot in the hot tub, you know, because I, I sprained my foot, you know. So, I, well, what do you want me to do on this follow up video? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe tear it down and uh, show us how to how to disassemble, reassemble, or. Maybe do a range video or uh, well, range like videos. That. I'll do. I'll do a lot. I, I've got my steel target all uh, pretty much assembled. So next time, the, the reason I haven't been back to the range, you know, since the last range video is because I did sprain my foot and the ground yeah. up there. It's it's really uneven rock, uneven and lots of rocks. And until my ankle is strong enough, that I mean, just walking on that kind of land is gonna. Know, completely screw up uh, with, you know I don't want to re-sprain it you know so 
I think maybe in another week it'll be strong enough so I can go out. And I want to take all my long guns out and, you know, take the Tavor out and uh, set up, you know, do it. I think I'm going to do a need for steel. You know, I feel the need for steel and just blast the shit out of my new steel target. I got a shoot steel target and uh, assembled it pretty much. And it's just been a question of bad ankle can't go on that. Because uh, it's like, you know, I have to basically run uphill on loose, rocky gravel and you know, it wouldn't be good. Well, I don't, if your ankle you, isn't you, up for it. You, yeah, you told me you were you were still uh, healing up, and and I know I don't want you to tear yourself up, and then you're 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 worse off. Uh, you know, I guess just when you're saying you're hanging by the pool, I'm thinking, well, if he can hang by the pool, he can hang at the range. But yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, it's you, you know, know, I have to walk uphill. Free beer day, so. No, it was free beer day, and 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 free you beer know, day, so. and a hot blonde chicks and bikinis. At Cool. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I would actually make a video with them, and and but except I would need their parents' permission to do it. So I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna mess with them on because uh, I have like a, I could bring my uh, uh, lantern that I could bring my siege lantern that floats in the water, you know, and, and get those girls to do like you know, dem a demonstration of how to press the on button on it or something, but. Um, and then you could, with that and free beer, you could figure out why I was never at the range. <laughs> yeah, my foot was really messed up, and you know, I hyperextended it backwards, uh, falling down the stairs, and I caught my basically, uh, you know, my right foot slipped on like some weights, and so I had to try and break my fall with my left foot, and and the left foot, the toe got caught on a stair as I was trying to get my foot under me, and it hyperextended backwards, and then I. Got my foot off of the stairs I, as I was still falling, and I, but I landed on the left foot. But I hyperextended backwards like one second later, but it was about six or seven stairs below where I was. So it was like, <laughs> when I woke up the next day, I couldn't even walk on it, and so they had to have it X-rayed, and they could see the soft tissue damage. But there weren't there were, they looked at there wasn't any sprains or there wasn't any fractures or breaks, but there was just a lot of soft tissue damage. So they gave me a prescription for tramadol. Uh, a girl put an ace bandage on it, and they gave some crutches, and somebody who recognized me from my YouTube channel wheeled me out in a wheelchair to my car, <laughs> to my blazer, and, uh, and, you know, and I limped back up the stairs. And for a couple of days, I was on crutches for two or three days, and, and it just, you know, ankle injuries take their own damn sweet time to get better. And, um, you know, you can't, it's like those soft tissue damages, you can't rush them. But, uh... So hopefully that will conclude the medical crap for today. <laughs> so are, what, yeah. are you, what's new with you as far as guns? You doing what about you? Are you doing any range videos? Are you doing any shooting lately? Or any new guns? Or I was going to go out to the range this weekend, and uh, I was actually sick this weekend, and I don't get sick very often, and uh, I didn't go, and uh, then. Uh, I, uh, I was thinking about maybe uh, doing something uh, this coming weekend, but uh, then the dryer broke, so I'll be, uh, I, spent, uh, I spent yesterday tearing it apart trying to figure out what's wrong with it, and in the end, the replacement parts are going to cost so much, i got to get a new dryer. So I don't use my dryer. I just put my clothes out on a chair in the lanai, and the You sun. can do that because you got the good weather all the time. It's... I don't know, somewhere in the teens outside, and we've had freezing uh, rain all day. So I, I can't do that. Otherwise, yeah, we just use a clothesline. But, uh, yeah, so this <laughs> weekend I'll probably be messing with the dryer instead of out at the range. But uh, So what temperature is it where you live right now? It's, let's see, what does my phone say? It's got to be somewhere in the teens. Uh, let's see. It's Above this midnight. Zero. Above uh, zero. No, at, wow, it's actually 31. Wow, I was way off. Well, we've had freezing rain all day, so off and on. So <laughs> I figured it was colder now, but still, uh, yeah, I, I, b between having a, I got to replace this dryer and stuff like that, I'm just going to hold off on going to the range. But when I do get to the range, I've got a lever action 44 that I want to try out. So I'm going to run oh, some cool. 44 specials and 44 magnums through there. Uh, I've got three different 44 magnum cartridges to try out. And uh, 144 special uh, load to try out. So I'm thinking about maybe getting some more ammo first. 
and then just try and seeing if it, if there's anything it doesn't like to feed. So, what manufacturer took, is it? Is it a Rossi or a what? It's a Henry. It's a Henry. A Henry. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I on my 44th birthday a couple weeks ago, I bu I decided to buy myself a 44. So it's my first 44. It's my first lever action. Uh, I watched some YouTube videos on uh, how to take it down and put it back together. Two different videos, and these guys had different uh, different ways of taking apart the same rifle and putting it back together. So between the two of them, I figured out what worked for me, uh, and uh, it it needed to be. I what I did was I tried to cycle some rounds through it and just eject them onto the floor just to see. And it was they were hanging up, so it, the 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 rifle just needed to be lubed. Once I uh, took it apart, lubed it, put it all back together. It just uh, fed them and spit them out. So, um, so it's a Henry Big Boy, right? Yeah, yeah, the Henry Big Boy. Yep. yep. Those look like fun rifles. Um, I ordered a sling for it. I don't like to uh, have a long gun without a sling, and I went ahead and I, I put that on. Uh, there's a guy who uh, makes a leather sling where you don't have to, you know, drill the uh, stock for the swivels and whatnot. So it clamps to the uh, magazine tube in the front and goes over the butt plate on the back. And uh, I've already got that adjusted. Um, I'm I'm not going to put an optic on it anytime soon. I, I'm kind of an iron sights guy, which is another thing. If you do a range test with that CZ, are you, are you going to do one with a with just iron sights and then maybe no. one with an optic no. later? That is, if I want iron sights, I'll use my AK, you know, I mean, if, if, yeah, if that's going to be my optic rifle, you know, uh, so. Okay. So you are going to, okay. But, um, yeah, you know, I was watching, the, I think, Independent Film Channel I had 48 hours on a couple times last night uh, with, you know, Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy, and, and uh, there was a funny part, and I think of the first one where the, where he's at the police station and the girl who's like the uh, forensic uh, gun person says, yeah, last year everybody's getting shot with 38 specials and then now this year it's everybody's using 44s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's a monster round to get, to, you know, and, and of course in that movie he, you know, he, he makes them, Nick Nolte's character makes the mistake of giving the bad guy his 44 you know, hoping he won't shoot, you know, another police officer, which he does, you know, or which somebody did. But um, I forget who pulled the trigger, if it was Billy Bear or Gans. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, that's like the only, uh, that, that was really funny is like, I talked to Sean from Florida Carry one time about the hunting laws in, you know, in the state of Hawaii, where you can only, you're, you're not allowed to carry a non-hunting caliber a handgun in the state Hawaii hunting ground. So, you know, I can't really take my nine millimeter Glock up 17 up there and go shooting anymore because it's not a hunting caliber. So I, so I was complaining about it. And so Sean said, well, from Flora Carey said, well, so let me get this straight. The only gun you can legally carry uh, in Hawaii anywhere is a 44 Magnum. I said, yep. And I said, he said, well, that's okay. I can get used to that. <laughs> I was yeah. like, but I don't own a forty-four Magnum, damn it! <laughs> That's what, well, you know, and then, and then now they have the, that wrap back law, you know. So I'm hoping some of this shit gets fixed, you know. But um, I really don't like the government telling me what kind of gunning I can and can't shoot. But it's the state of Hawaii's land, so you know they own the hunting area. So and there's no fucking range, you know, on the west side of Hawaii at all, and there's barely any range on the east side. So it's like, you know. Well, part of the reason I got it was because of the hunting laws in Michigan. I keep saying I'm going to go deer hunting, and then I don't. And where I live in Michigan, the, the part of Michigan I live in, you can hunt with certain handgun calibers. Uh, you can use a rifle or a pistol. It's got to be a straight wall cartridge less than 1.8 inches in length, so it cannot be a bottleneck cartridge. You could hunt with a 357, a 38 special, 44 Magnum, a 45 ACP. You you can use those, but you couldn't use uh, you couldn't use something that that's that's tapered like a, a 223 or a 4570 or something like that. That's further up north, and they've got other rules too. I mean, uh, but around here, the only thing I could really go deer hunting with, uh, you know, an hour and a half from my house was my 45. Yeah, in Hawaii, so, what? 
what the problem I have is if they, they won't let you go shooting or, you know, there's no place to shoot on the west side of the island and at all, there's no range. And so they don't let you go. If you, if they, if you go shooting with like a nine millimeter, you know, Glock or something, they can just seize all of your guns because you have one that isn't a hunting round and you were just trying to shoot targets. You weren't hunting with it. You just go to shoot, you know, some steel or paper and, and they'll just take all your guns away because you're violating the hunting codes, you know, and it's just, so it's so just a gun you have confiscation. To shoot at the range or nowhere else. There's no range to shoot at. It's just a hunting area that everybody goes shoots at. Where I was shooting, that's you know that was you know a hunting area that people use as a range. And people shoot handguns there all the time. But if the DLNR shows up and they want to seize a bunch of guns, they could. You know. Uh, now see, the DNR here says you can hunt on state land, but you cannot target shoot on state land. You have to target shoot. At, at a, at a state run range or a private range or on private property. So if I owned, say I own 10 acres out in the country, uh, I could, I could go shooting out there, but if there were state land right next door, I couldn't go over there and shoot. So I, I understand what you're saying. You know, uh, the, the Henry resolves a couple things. I mean, first off, I wanted to get a 44 on my 44th and I did. I've never owned a lever action. Now I do. I've never owned a 44 Magnum. Now I do. And I can deer hunt in Southeast Michigan with this because I got to tell you, I'm not going to hit a deer with a 45 ACP at a distance greater than 50 yards. That's not accurately. Whereas this thing, I could reach out and touch it to a hundred yards easy. And I know the 44 is going to have more than enough knockdown power to take down the, the oh, animal. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want the thing running and, and bleeding out and stuff. If I can help it, I, I want, I want a nice clean kill and and whatnot now i've never used these type of sites before it's drilled and tapped for a scope i don't plan to put a scope on it but uh when, once i shoot it, it it'll be you know I'll, I'll just have to get used to it but this is this is my i resolve a couple things all at once um i did get a black powder revolver uh a week later so right before the end of the year i picked up a black powder revolver but i only managed to put seven rounds through it so I'm at the range and these guys are blasting away with a 12 gauge and they're making all kinds of noise and they're all giggling and laughing and just carrying on. And I said, that was fun. It. yeah, so I put 50 grains of powder in my Walker and, uh, proceeded to let one rip. They were shooting and shooting and shooting and I let one go and they all stopped to look and, uh, you can fit a lot more than 50 grains of powder in it. So, uh, and I'm like, yeah, I got some shit too, guys, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's kind of nice when you can do that. Yeah. Well, um, uh, I know a secondhand story about one guy who was, some guys were being careless with their shop placement and, and, uh, this guy that went shooting with once he had, a uh, uh, he had a full auto, uh, I think it was a Mac 10. Uh, and, and so he put, so he was just, he had been shooting in, you know, semi-automatic, you know, one shot at a time. And they, they let us, they were just had some handguns. They let a shot, a few shots get too close to him. So he put it in full auto and just, you know, fired down the range and they all, they stopped shooting in his direction and they got in their car and left right away. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's the, where, where I went shooting with him was out. It's like out in the middle of nowhere in the Angeles forest, you know, but, um, that's when Mac tens were still legal to buy in California, so that was a long time ago. Um, uh, so like a long, long time when I was a kid. But uh, yeah, you know the thing in Hawaii is you are allowed if you, you see if you you can't you could shoot with a three fifty seven, but only if it's like it has to be like you know a full size like five or six inch barrel or something. You know, and mine's a snubby, so. You know, it has. It's based on the muzzle velocity or something, at feet, foot, pounds of pressure. I don't know some something, but you know, my snubby is doesn't qualify for my three fifty seven. So I would really need a, a forty four Magnum to go. You know, and none of the guns that I own, the handguns that I, I'm allowed to shoot with, is out there anymore. So you know, I guess I'll just, you know, you either go and take your chances or you don't shoot. You know, basically that's that's why they passed that law. You know, they, 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 and they wanted a, you know, gun confiscation law so they could seize anybody gun, anybody's guns anytime they wanted to, you know, so, um, when they, the governor signed those, you know, but I don't think they're the federal, federal Trump being president is going to change the hunting law to the state of Hawaii. But, you know, I don't know about as far as the, you know, the state banning, um, uh, 
suppressors and stuff. I don't know. I guess we'll see with with if and when that uh, bill gets passed and signed, uh, you know, well, by the Congress. You, you don't look at it like this. It's not just how many shooters will save their hearing with these. It's how many people live near these shooting ranges that won't be hearing the noise anymore or not as much of it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's something, it's not a, it's not a gangster tool. It's something that's actually beneficial. Uh, you know, it wasn't invented for assassins. It was invented because they wanted to get women shooting and women were afraid of the sounds of the guns. And, you know, I don't know the history of it. Uh, but I know that, um, like locally, you know, like people that live, um, against the forest reserve and have a lot of trouble with, uh, uh, you know, wild boar, you know, going on their property and, you know, chewing up their gardens and plants and everything, you know, that they, they don't want to go shooting with a full-size rifle because it really bothers their neighbors all the time. So they prefer to use, they'll literally use a 22 to try and kill a hog because, uh, and you know, if they have a silencer or a suppressor, you know, it, it'll just, you know, make it it's so they won't bother their neighbors, you know, if they have to deal with, you know, hogs. Uh, and, um, or something like that, or, you know, just annoying pests. But um, so uh, some people sometimes, uh, the guy who owns the gun shop, one of the gun shops around here uses a 22 Magnum, uh, you know, to, to shoot hogs because it's not as noisy as like, you know, a 5.56 or, you know, 7.62 or, or, you know, a 308 or something, you know, a larger rifle round. So. They have uses, you know, which is basically not bothering your neighbors, you know. Um, and, uh, I mean, I, I know they have military uses, but that's not, they, they really have very few criminal uses that would make any sense, you know, uh, to a criminal who commits your average. It's just, besides, they're too expensive. You've got to get, you know, you've got to modify, a, you know, a, 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 a lot of guns you have to modify it to get it to work right with a suppressor and you know it's just it's not the right know. ammunition and yeah there's 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 more to it than just and then now for a criminal they don't care because they probably don't clean their guns but you know for for us we're we're going to be cleaning them you know they're they're going to get filthy and and that sort of thing and you know you got to take the thing <coughs> excuse me you got to take the thing off and you know, store it and then put it back on and whatnot. I mean, there, there's more to it than, you know, I mean, some people go, oh, that's no big deal, whatever. But I can't say that nobody would ever break into a house and steal somebody's uh, guns that weren't locked up and not come across one of these things. Uh, but they could still come across them right now. There are people who own them. There's a guy that works with me that owns two of them. You know, well, I mean, and there's so criminals videos, could get their hands on them. And, and, but a criminal could go on the internet and figure out how to use a, you know, a common everyday but, but item to, to make one. What are they going to get out of it? I mean, really, what are they going to get out of it? No, it's a pain in the ass to make one, you know. And, and you know, I mean, I don't it, know, you could use a Coke bottle or something or, or oil, oil um, filters or shit, you know, but it's like. There's no reason for a criminal to do that. It, you're you doing know. a drive by and it makes noise, and you're doing a drive by and it doesn't make noise. You're still doing a drive by. I mean, you know, they're gonna spray. They're gonna spray the house, you know, with with bullets, and they're gonna take off. Or uh, if they're if they're going in some place and if and they're doing, doing if they're up, doing a I mean, drive by, it's gonna be more than one one person with a gun it's going to be like a carload full of people with well, guns you shoot. never know i mean and if, even I, if they I all know. had suppressors the people would know well it's still it's not going to stop the bullet the bullet's still going to leave the barrel so i mean and it's still going to be noisy you know but you know because there's a, you know that it doesn't ha what, have any effect what on the intended for for what they're intended for it doesn't it's not conducive for what the criminal's trying to do I'm not saying a criminal would never use one, but it's not going to make them more deadly. It's not going to make them more accurate. It's it's not really going to make them more stealthy per se. I'm not really. I mean, it, when, 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 when a, when a bullet, size, you know. I mean, unless I'm incorrect, when a bullet you know goes from supersonic to subsonic, there's going to be a loud crack, right? 
not only that it affects it affect, it it affects the accuracy of the round when it when it goes through that when it comes out of of supersonic into subsonic it, it actually uh, affects it its accuracy I mean, and, and it's just anybody who's ever heard, like, a, uh, especially if you're in Israel, I mean, if you ever heard supersonic jets, you know, create a bang when they go supersonic or from supersonic to subsonic, it's, it, it's not stealthy. You can hear them miles away. <laughs> but it's just, it may not be as loud if, if the, 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 the blast out of the barrel of the gun near where the shooter is isn't as loud, so he doesn't go deaf when he pulls the trigger. But, I mean, you know. I mean. Dead Horse puts here in the chat, only thing I can see is drive-bys, but they can imp improvise them, and they still don't do that. And that just made me think. You know, you can put a two-liter on the end of a gun, and it's it's a it's silencer for about one or two rounds. Well, suppressor. I mean, so you could, if you want to muffle the sound, you could duct tape a empty two-liter to the end of, uh, of of a gun. Um, it's not, you know, you're gonna need a rifle or something like that. But uh, so you 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 can get supposedly i mean i've never done it i've only read about it but that you could you can get one or two rounds off before it it's it loses the effect that it, it's going to reduce that noise so, I mean, I, I, I did somebody, i'm trying to remember what if it was in south america or somewhere in america uh, in north america in the u.s where they banned like you know empty you know two liter soda bottles you know <laughs> Well, what I'm saying because they could be used that way, and it's just like dumb. You could improvise one. You could improvise one. So if if it's that easy to improvise one, why aren't they doing it? They aren't doing it because it's not something criminals use. It's something that shooters would be using at the range, or hunters would be using while hunting. It's not. It, but it's just it's hard to it's hard to get somebody who doesn't understand guns. To, to understand things like that. They only believe what they see in the movies. They only believe oh, yeah. what they hear on the news. It's, it's yeah, hard. In, in it's, the movies, it's a in difficult the movies, argument. In the movies, they just screw in a, a, you know, a metal cylinder and onto the end of a barrel of any gun, and all of a sudden it's like, you know, it, all they hear is choop, 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 anytime somebody pulls the trigger, and it's not like that. It doesn't work like that. So Do you notice logic, that the, the, logic the doesn't work on gun grabbers. Well, no, it doesn't work on them. But the assassin in the TV shows, whenever they're 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 using a a, a, a suppressed pistol or they're screwing the silencer on, they they're always wearing black leather gloves. Why is that? They don't want to get their fingerprints on the, you know, or did you see the one TV show where they put a a, a silencer on a revolver? That doesn't work. So, I mean, but the average person they don't understand that. Yeah, I remember the there's a episode where they say in on Hawaii Five O, like the old old one with Jack Lord, where they somebody is like sent out to assassinate, you know, Steve McGarrett, and, and yeah, he's wearing black gloves and he has a silencer that's screwed into a some kind of gun, and you know, whenever yeah, you know, whenever he shoots it, it hardly makes any noise at all, you know. But I mean, it sounds cool. So I'm like, you 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 you, you know, or it, it's it, and it's just that's not. It's not real. It's fantasy, you know. And and but, you know, they also had on the the, the latest Hawaii Five O, the you know the current series where where somebody goes into a gun shop, and 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 sticks up the gun shop owner and and comes out with a full auto, you know, M sixteen and starts shooting up the police cars with the full auto. They don't. There's no full auto weapons allowed in the state of Hawaii, you know, unless, unless the military has them. So it's just. It could never happen in reality, but on TV, the guy, you know, shoots up 20 cop cars before they get him, you know, and with a full auto M16 after he, you know, uh, you know, walks into a gun shop and sticks up the gun shop, gun store owner. And it's like, you know, that could never happen, you know, because there aren't any to steal <laughs> in, this, in this state, and except that, you know, the military base, you know, so it's just the... You know, I don't know. Popular culture in the movies or don't bear any resemblance to reality. You know, uh, most of the time. So that's why I like old movies. I like, uh, you know, Turner Classic movies, and uh, you know. So I could talk about old movies all day. I think they were talking about the Hondo on uh, uh, on the Daily Gun Show, and uh, I was uh, I was remembering that James Arness's character. 
tells his wife the 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 the, the, the lady that J uh, John Wayne's character is staying with and uh, that that he that John Wayne's character shot her or killed her husband and uh, because he wants the Winchester rifle that John Wayne has <laughs> he says give me the rifle or I'll spill my guts you know he wasn't gonna give him give up the Winchester and uh, so. But it's a movie. It's all fantasy. And, but hey, they're fun to watch. You know, I, I'm still. I haven't put in the accountant. I've got that DVD Blu-ray. Last time I was at the store and haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Maybe after the show, <laughs> if I don't pass out from all that free beer. Uh. So, anything else we should talk about? Dead Horse. So you're out there. I, I don't know if there's anything else you want us to talk about uh, before we pack it in. It's kind of late for those of us in the Eastern time zone. Oh, what time is it where you're at in, in Michigan, I think? Yeah. It's uh, 1225. All right. I'm going to let you go go to sleep so you can get up. Do you have work tomorrow? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If if I do this every Monday night, I'll cry like a little baby when I want to go. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I'll have to add something else to my. I'll have to add caffeine pills to my medical kit. <laughs> I used to live on espressos and 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 uptime caffeine pills, but that's a whole nother matter. Uh, so I'm not going to add up time pills. I mean, I could see that if you were, if you needed to stay awake for, uh, um, like, you know, uh, for some re military tactical reason or strategic reason, you know, you need to be awake for, uh, oh, you think we had a good show tonight? Thanks, Dead Horse. Uh, you know, jump in sometime next week. You know, it'll be even better. But, yeah, I, I was able to stay awake with uh, uptime and, and espresso shots, but I could see if there was some reason where you had to stay awake for some reason that that would come in handy. I, I had to when I was – I had duplication, film duplication deadlines. I had to mix films by and the work had to be done. But uh, I wouldn't recommend that on a, anything except an emergency basis. Unfortunately, I did, had to do it all the time because every fucking project was an emergency. But anyway – they paid me enough for it back then. So I'm, I'm going to close out this chat. Thanks, everybody listening out on the YouTube and playing it back after the chat. And thanks, Dead Horse and Squib and uh, Edge was here earlier. And uh, um, check out gunchannels.com. Uh, it's free over there to join. Um, and uh, tell them HBS sent you. All right. Uh, let me fucking find the button to end this one. Uh, everybody, y'all be cool. See you next week. Why won't you squat out? Terminating. Terminated the chat, yeah.